Trevor Lawrence suffered a high ankle sprain Monday's overtime loss to the Cincinnati Bengals. The Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback suffered the injury in the fourth quarter after his leg was stepped on by his own teammate, Walker Little. Head coach Doug Peterson said the team will evaluate, evaluate Lawrence later this week, but they haven't ruled out the possibility of him actually playing this Sunday against the Cleve. Good guy, that Mike Garofalo. Here he is, Mike Garofalo. Uh, I believe he has a medical degree from Rutgers, so we're going to ask him some medical questions here. Uh, Mike, Doug Peterson does not rule out Trevor Lawrence for this weekend. Now, I said you have the medical degree. What is the typical recovery yep. for an injury like this? LaSalle University right here. This is a... Uh... This is the shining star from the communication department. Uh, they don't hand these out in the, the medical world. So um, if it's got anything to do with mass communication, I'm your guy. If it's got anything to do with high ankle sprains, well, while covering the NFL, I've, I've come across a few high ankle sprains. And you're sure. talking about usually a multi-week injury. We have seen Patrick Mahomes in the postseason uh, not miss any time with a high ankle sprain. Uh, this tend, this uh, sounds like it was more on the milder end of things. I mean, the, 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 the high ankle sprain can come with uh, associated fractures, severe ligament tears. It sounds like this one there is, as Doug Peterson put it, the stability. So they're not ruling him out for this game. They want to see how he's going to be in a couple of days. I truly believe, based on the conversations that I have had, uh, that they are hoping that he's somehow able uh, to tape it up and battle his way through it. Remember, he battled through the knee injury earlier this year, and he actually – Last year, got twisted in much the same way in a game against the Detroit Lions. I don't think he missed a snap in that game, and that's when uh, they started their five-game winning streak at the end of the year uh, after that game against Detroit. So the hope is that he'll do everything he possibly can to get out there. Now, C.J. Beathard, uh, Doug Peterson said, hey, he let us down for the game-tying field goal. It was a great post-game bite. He said he let us down for the game-tying field goal. And he just pauses and kind of stares and goes, should have been the game-winning field goal because he was upset that Brandon McManus missed the kick before that. It was a great bite uh, after the game. But uh, they do have some confidence in C.J. Beathard. Doesn't sound like uh, they're really going to make an effort to bring in a big-name uh, quarterback. There aren't many out there. Nick Foles, someone suggested him because of his connection with Doug Peterson. But uh, it is Trevor Lawrence. The hope is that he's going to return. If not, C.J. Beathard, a guy that they do have confidence in against the Browns, who have their own quarterback situation trying to figure out if DTR, Dorian Thompson-Robinson, clears the concussion protocol, or do they stick with Joe Flacco? From my understanding, they feel like Flacco did a really good job acclimating himself, getting used to the playbook and the terminology, and feel like with another week could be even better. So maybe C.J. Beathard against Joe Flacco, but we'll see wow. how the week goes on. And no chance, and I have to ask this because he's Canadian, no chance Nathan Rourke, who is the third stringer in Jacksonville, would even get, yeah. would he even get a shot, Mike, even a chance with Beathard there? Now, now, I heard that the Jaguars, I know this, were sniffing around Matt Barkley, who was just waived by the Giants. Uh, and I was speaking to a personnel guy. And he says, Rourke is better than Barkley, the guy that they've got there. So uh, I do know that there is uh, a thought around the league that that guy's pretty good. And, and, and who knows, maybe if he gets a shot one day. So uh, perhaps he gets called up to be the backup. But again, it depends uh, on what happens with Trevor Lawrence the rest of the week. That makes sense. Uh, let's stay with these ankle sprain discussions, Mike, because people are loving it. Uh, Kenny yeah. Pickett suffers the same injury Sunday against the Cardinals. He decides to have surgery on Monday. Could that surgery actually accelerate the recovery time? Could we see Kenny Pickett back for the Steelers game in Indianapolis December the 16th? That, well, that, the, the hope is that, yes, that's, and that's why the surgery was conducted to help speed. Injury to him, but look, it's a short week. They obviously know it's going to be Mitchell Trubisky for this game. And uh, I know I spoke to a couple folks with the Patriots, including quarterback Jonathan Jones, who said, we know they're going to rely on Trubisky's athleticism, so we have to be ready for that. So look for a little bit of a different look from the Steelers' offense, uh, maybe along the lines of what they tried when Trubisky was first the quarterback there last year when he started and Pickett was the backup. And, and I talk about the, the switching of the quarterbacks because – what if Mitchell Trubisky plays well? Uh, mm. Kenny Pickett has not been playing well lately. 
Uh, look, that'll be a good problem for the Steelers to have to figure out if they keep riding with Trubisky and don't rush Pickett back or maybe even keep him uh, Trubisky in when Pickett is healthy. Uh, but right now, the Steelers need some kind of a jolt on offense, and they also absolutely cannot afford to drop this game against the <laughs> Patriots. Uh, you can't fumble the bag on this one, given how tight things are suddenly for the wild card. I mean, they blew an opportunity to really get another game ahead of all these teams at six and seven wins. They're now stuck at seven wins. They've got to get the eighth one against New England. Well, you know, maybe that jolt on offense, Mike, will come from just playing the New England Patriots, because as you and I both know, they are not yeah. good this season. Two and ten, it has been an extremely frustrating year if you're a Patriots fan, used to all these years of success. Shut out twice at home, failed to score more than seven points the last three games. You know, and everybody thinks about Bill Belichick. And, you know, there was a time when you thought, this guy's untouchable under Robert Kraft, but could the Bill Belichick era, Mike, actually be coming to an end in New England? I believe so. I know Robert Kraft wanted him to break the record for all-time wins among NFL coaches while with the Patriots. But at this pace, it's going to take a couple of more years until he gets there. I mean, nobody expected him to be uh, sitting there at, what, 2-10 and 10 at this point. So I think within the last couple of weeks, publicly, it's kind of sort of been accepted that this is probably it for Belichick and the end of an era in New England. I, I know going back to a month and a half, two months ago even, uh, when things started to really look bad, I started to hear some things out of New England about – it just feels like it's time right now. And with every loss, it just seems like we get closer and closer to it. Robert Kraft has not spoken really on the matter. I thought back in October at the league meeting uh, in New York, he would have his say to the media assembled, decided not to even walk through the area where the cameras were. But back in March, when he said Gerard Mayo was the guy uh, who would be the successor, or likely the successor in New England. Now, they would have to conduct a full coaching search, but... Uh, Robert Kraft has made it clear that he likes the former Patriots linebacker turned defensive coach as a potential replacement in New England. That really set the clock on Bill Belichick and the fact that they have been so bad from a win-loss perspective. Even though they've played well on defense, the quarterback situation is a mess. The offense is a mess. They played well on defense, which is certainly Belichick's forte. But it, it is really starting to feel like time, Jay, and it's just going to be surreal once it finally inevitably does happen after this season. We'll let you know when that comes about. And it might be an attractive job just because this team currently owns the number two overall pick in the draft, and there are a lot of good quarterbacks yeah. out there, Mike, for them to take if they choose to do that. Uh, he is our NFL insider, Mike Garofolo. Mike, thanks for this. We'll talk to you soon. Great job, Dr. Mike. <laughs> you got it. The doctor is out. The doctor is out. Here is the uh, FanDuel numbers for Patriots Steelers. We've got the game for you Thursday night. Steelers, six point favorites over the Pats. No surprise there. Look at the over under, a measly 30 and a half points. Uh, this game, of course, kicks off 7 Eastern. Our coverage begins. Then we'll follow the game. Myself, Luke Wilson, will break it down. We follow every primetime NFL game this entire NFL season.